uh, I'll be presenting a case of a three-year-old female child. Who came with a history of hemoptysis since three to four days. The radiological investigations revealed a cystic lesion in the right lung. You can see here. Uh, which was clinically and radiologically suspected to be a bronchogenic cyst. Patient underwent right thoracotomy and a lobectomy and intraoperatively they thought it to be an adenomatoid malformation with dense adhesions to the hilar structure. We received a lobectomy. This is the serial sections of the lobe which is showing the cystic lesion in the center uh, which is uh, continuous with the hilar structure. The closer view of the same showed a central cyst with a thick wall. The surrounding lung parenchyma was very firm uh, which and lost its regular spongy nature. The periphery of the lung uh, was appearing normal and with spongy appearance. Now going to the uh, digitized images. The microscopy of the same showed the reflection of the same uh, gross uh, thing. Like uh, this is the cyst. You can see the fibrocollagenous dense wall of the cyst, the busy lung parenchyma, and a normal appearing parenchyma. On a higher power view, you can see the respiratory epithelium the bronchiolar epithelium which is ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with the dense inflammation, the fibrocollagenous wall and the adjacent lung parenchyma appeared very busy with a lot of inflammation and the normal appearing lung parenchyma beyond that. The other fossae of the cysts showed a smaller cysts in the cyst wall, which gives us a clue to the diagnosis again. Uh, this is the smaller cysts in the cyst wall with the lining, similar lining epithelium, surrounded by mild inflammation in a dense fibrocollagenous cyst wall. The firmer areas of the lung parenchyma showed dense inflammation. This is the low power view. Higher power view uh, just obliterated the alveolar uh, spaces and the interstitium as well. There was dense inflammation which was composed of neutrophils, lymphocytes, plasma cells, the macrophages, the pigment laden macrophages. So there was some super added infection as well adjacent to the, the cyst. The sections away from the cyst showed near normal lung parenchyma. You can appreciate here the terminal bronchioles with the pulmonary arteries. This is normal occurring alveoli with the, no much inflammation or fibrosis. So based on these features, the diagnosis was of a congenital adenomatoid malformation type 1 with super added infection. Uh, this mal there's a brief discussion about this malformation. It was first described in 1897 with an incidence of 1 in 11,000 to 1 in 35,000 live births with the highest incidence in the mid trimester because uh, most uh, few of the cases tend to spontaneously resolve in the mid trimester. Classification scheme of CCAM has evolved over time based on origin of the uh, site of development. Presently, uh, it is divided into five types that is from 0 to 4 um, and this include like 0 is from tracheobronchi. 1 bronchial and bronchio, 2 is bronchiolar, 3 bronchial and the alveoli, and 4th is the distal acinar. 
The classification is important because they usually give us the idea of the prognosis of the lesion. Type 0 is considered uh, lethal and it is very rare. Uh, in it is lethal in utero. It uh, represents global arrest of the lung development with asina dysplasia and dysgenesis. Type 1 is the most common one, which is uh, which accounts for about 70% of the cases, uh, like our case, uh, which shows larger cells with some smaller cells in the wall, surrounded by smaller cells, uh, and tend to have a very good prognosis if resected. This is the one of the examples of type uh, type one, but uh, the patient, uh, uh, the fetus developed high drops, hence came for the fetal autopsy. Here you can see the enlarged right lung, which is compressing on the uh, heart and the adjacent lung, the other lung, leading to high drops. This is the cross section of the lung, where you can see multiple cysts. And the microscopy of the scene showed a uh, lining epithelium which showed mucinous metaplasia. If, uh, and this can, uh, uh, can be a precancerous lesion and may develop cancer or malignancy later if not attended to. So the uh, next one is the type 2 variant which is the second most common one uh, and the prognosis of which uh, depends upon the other abnormalities which is uh, which are usually associated with type 2 anomalies. It is renal agenesis, pulmonary sequestration and congenital cardiac anomalies are known to occur with it. And the cysts in these cases are smaller than what we see in type 1. This is the gross image of uh, one of the cases uh, which was diagnosed as type 2. You can see multiple cysts which are not uh, big in size though few are red with hemorrhage in them. The microscopy shows the bronchial epithelium. The type 3 and type 4 are, uh, usually have poor prognosis. They are rarer than type 1 and type 2 and usually involve the distal airways. And uh, the, the histologically they represent the the distal air, uh, alveolar and alcinar uh, structural elements could be seen in that. So the differentials while diagnosing these include bronchogenic cysts, which is usually differentiated based on uh, cartilage in the wall. Uh, type 1 has cartilage, but the overall, the, overall there is dysgenesis and dysplasia in case of uh, CCAM type 1. Pulmonary sequestration. Uh, has a separate arterial supply. They didn't. Do, they don't get a pulmonary arterial supply. So during surgery, uh, we can make out that these are pulmonary sequestrations rather than the uh, uh, CCAM cysts. Then congenital lobar emphysema. It is a part of lung which is hyperinflated, bronchitis, which is usually localized, and congenital diaphragmatic herniation. We can make out because they are, these are bowel lobes within the thorax. The complications which are usually seen with CCAM uh, malformations can be divided into in utero and postnatal. In utero, the fetus may develop high drops due to compression of fetal um, heart and the great vessels and pulmonary hypoplasia due to compression of the normal fetal lung. So these can be fatal. Uh, then comes the postnatal complications which usually uh, are pneumothorax, hemothorax and polyneumothorax. If unresected, they may later in life lead to malignant changes and uh, carcinomas like bronchoalveolar, bronchogenic, neuropulmonary and rhabdomyosarcomas have been reported in these cases. The management can also be again divided into antenatal and postnatal. Antenatal, uh, you can have regular obstetric straining uh, with fetal echocardiogram and amniocentesis. And once you find these to be abnormal, we can go ahead with the termination of the pregnancy. And the other um, uh, complication which is common that is high drops, which has a very poor prognosis, uh, can be um, a few options of interventions have been uh, uh, have been tried upon and with the good results like thoracocentesis, thoracoamniotic shunts, and open fetal surgery with CCAM resections. And uh, the results with these uh, interventions have been good in case the patient develops high drops. The 
host navel, uh, the resection is considered to be curative and uh, lobectomies or segmentectomies can be taken up as the risk of repeated infections and malignant transformation is there. Overall, if we see the prognosis uh, range between 80 to 100 percent, the survival to delivery is reported to be 95 percent. If the patient develops high drops, the fetus develops high drops and the interventions have been taken uh, and the interventions have been done, the prognosis can be 100%. Uh, so overall, these cases can have good prognosis if we take care uh, antenatally and, uh, and timely interventions will help us in uh, reducing the infections and malignant transformation.